Good morning. But did I need to pass out Kleenex? <laughs> In case you're wondering, that was from season three of The Chosen. I saw that clip and I said, I got to use that somewhere. <laughs> and then we did this series. And in this series, we're dealing with five P's about how we are called to engage. And today's P is pain. Now, if you haven't been with us the, the previous weeks, we've talked about how God prepares us to engage. God goes ahead of us. You heard Becca. God had gone before her, laying the groundwork, tilling the soil, preparing the way for what she would be called in to do. Purpose, being obedient to God's call when we see it. When we see the opportunity and following through, and then pain, recognizing that in our journey to engage, there will be pain. We all have it. Next week, we'll talk about power and the power of the spirit that empowers us to be able to do what God has called us to do. And then lastly, passion. That's why we've been having people share their stories because every single one who has been up here has been passionate about what God has called them into and how they've been able to engage. Our overarching theme is on the cover of your bulletin. It comes from John chapter 14, verse 12. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the father. Jesus had to leave so that we could do greater works, greater works than what he even did. How is that even possible? We often wonder, but that's what this series is about. This engage series calling us to engage. Cause that's what, that's what Christ calls us to do to engage. Christianity is not a passive faith. Christianity is an active faith. We are called out to go and do, to engage. Today's text comes from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 4 through 11. It reads like this. In your struggle against sin, you have yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And you have forgotten that word of encouragement that addresses you as sons. My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. And <clears throat> endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are an illegitimate children and not true sons. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of our spirits and live? Our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good that we may share in his holiness. And listen to this key verse. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. May God add his blessing to this word. Pain. I know very few people who enjoy pain. I don't like pain. I'd like to think I have a, a high tolerance for pain, but that doesn't mean I like it. But pain is something that is real in this world. Pain brings with it an acknowledgement that we need someone else. Now, in the world, there are some people, it's a very small percentage, but there are some people who do not feel pain. 
physical pain. They can get cut and they feel nothing. They can get burned. They can grab a hot pan and not feel a thing. Their hand will blister and they won't feel it at all. They don't know to call out for help because they don't feel it. Can you imagine going through life not feeling physical pain? Now we might say that, oh, that'd be nice. But think about it. It is in that pain that we know to call out for help. I don't like pain any more than the next person. But what is pain? What is pain all about? Why do we even have to have it? Where does it come from? Well, James, brother of Jesus, in his letter, writes this in chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something, but don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Now, pain. Pain is often viewed as something negative, isn't it? We all want to avoid pain at all cost. And for those of us that go through life in pain, and there's lots of people out there that do, that struggle day in and day out. Maybe it's not physical pain. Maybe it's emotional pain, mental pain. Whatever kind of pain it is, those people who go through life daily carrying this pain with them would like to avoid it if they could. And when they realize that they can't get away from it for whatever reason, they call out for help, but in the wrong way. They seek to drown it out in worldly pleasures. They look to drugs to numb themselves, alcohol, sex, wrong relationships. Doesn't matter what it is, they're, they're looking for something else. But what did I say before? Without pain, we don't know how to call out for help. And when we turn to all these other worldly pleasures, we're calling out for help but in all the wrong places. Now you heard in Hebrews chapter 12, verse four to 11, when I read at the beginning that God disciplines us. Now discipline is different than punishment, okay? Now there may be some of you out there who had parents who punished you. They didn't discipline you. And I am sorry that that happened to you. But discipline is the positive side of that. We all need to be disciplined. And if we anticipate that our earthly parents, whether they be fathers or mothers, should discipline us, they're doing that for our own good. Some of you might recall when spanking was permitted. <laughs> Your parents saying, this is going to hurt me a lot more than it's going to hurt you. <laughs> they lie. <laughs> no. It does hurt a parent. It hurts a parent to have to discipline a child. But the discipline is necessary. It's almost like guardrails. You can't allow a child to just do whatever they want to do. You've got to set boundaries. You've got to set guardrails to protect them. And when they step outside those boundaries or go past those guardrails, they need to be disciplined to understand you need to stay in these guardrails. It's for your own good. So why would we think that our Father in Heaven is any different? We want to believe that our Father in Heaven is this, this all-wonderful God who just loves us unconditionally, and He does. But it is because He loves us unconditionally that He also has to discipline us. And with discipline does come pain. In that clip, 
we saw little James being talked to by Jesus and he shares with him that yes, he could be healed. He could have the pain taken away, but what kind of story would that be to tell? He's out healing people when he himself could be healed, but it's because he has faith in God. He understands who he is in Christ Jesus. And that is what we have to do as we struggle with the pain in our lives day in and day out. Some days are great days and other days we're in the valley. And we struggle with that pain. But we have to claim our identity in Christ. Acknowledging and recognizing who we are when we accept Jesus into our lives. We are children of our Father in heaven. We have been adopted into his family. And we are loved and cared for. We are children of God. We are saints. We are his beloved. And we are conquerors. And I think in the midst of our pain, we often forget those titles. We want to listen to the evil one who tells us that we are weak. That God doesn't love us. That we're worthless. That we're defeated. And we should just crawl back into our hole and be forgotten. But I'm here to tell you that pain can do more than hurt. Pain can do more than hurt. Because when we claim our identity, when we claim our identity in Christ, when we acknowledge who we are because we have been adopted into God's family by Jesus' suffering, Yes, Jesus' pain brought us into God's household. Jesus' suffering, Jesus acknowledging that his Father in heaven loved him and still sent him to the cross. And God, Jesus, went willingly for you and for me. He knew who he was. He knew that he belonged to the Father. And in spite of the suffering that he would have to go through, innocent as he was, he felt it was worth it because the price that he was paying was for you and for me. We believe in a Savior that went to a cross and died for us, was brutally punished, suffered, was ridiculed. Why do we think that our life here on earth as followers of Jesus is going to be some rose garden, that there's not going to be difficulties? But the difference between us and those people who do not know who Jesus is is we know that ultimately God is good. As children of God, pain produces righteousness in our lives. Hebrews 12, 11, No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but that we may share. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Trained by it. Acknowledging the pain in our lives. Being trained up and putting us in right relationship. That's what righteousness means. Right relationship. And it is through this right relationship that we can acknowledge that we are children of God. And because we are children of God, this pain shall pass. Jesus told little James, whether your healing happens here in this earthly realm or when you step over that threshold into eternity and meet your father in heaven, you will be healed. It's just a matter of time. Unfortunately for us, though, we're impatient. We want it now. We don't want to wait
And we can blame society for some of that because society tells us if you want it, you should get it right now. You shouldn't have to wait. It doesn't matter what it is. But God is a God of eternity. He sees the big picture. And he is there in the midst of whatever it is that we're going through. And he is in it for the long haul. Pain also tells us that even though we have this pain, we can comfort others. Second Corinthians chapter one, verses three and four. Praise be to God, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. Did it ever occur to you that the pain that you are going through is intended to be used to be able to comfort others? That's one of the unique aspects of Stephen ministry. Many people who become Stephen ministers become Stephen ministers because of pain that they have suffered and have gone through and made it through to the other side. And they saw how God worked in the midst of that pain. And now they are able to come alongside others and comfort them. Sometimes, though, we're still in the midst of our pain when we need to comfort others. How hard is that? All too often, I see people that are in pain. And this may not be a very popular thing to say. I see people who are in pain. And instead of embracing their church family, they run from it. They hunker down and they hide because they're afraid that the church is going to judge them. It's not going to understand their pain. They don't want to have to explain why they feel the way they do, or they just don't have the energy to put on that sunny Sunday morning smile that everything is fine. That's not what church should be about. Church should be the place that we run to when we are in pain. As saints, we are comforted so that we can comfort others. It is through reaching out to other people in our pain that our pain can be lessened. We can see that things are not as bad as we thought they were. As God's beloved, we share in Christ's glory when we suffer. As I said earlier, Jesus Christ went to the cross, suffered, was, was beaten, ridiculed, all of that. And he was innocent. If there was anybody who had a right to complain or say that I don't deserve this, it was him. And yet, he still suffered. And as we suffer, we can rejoice in that glory because we know that we belong to him. And as conquerors, as conquerors, we can rejoice because nothing can snatch us from God's hand. When we accept Christ into our lives, he's in our lives. And nothing and no one can take us out of his hand. That in and of itself should provide us comfort. I started to mention that there's other people out there that are hurting more than you are. The more time that we spend by ourselves in our pain, the more we think that our pain is the worst pain that anybody has ever suffered. Until we meet someone who's hurting more than we are. And I can guarantee you, regardless of whatever pain you're feeling right now, 
There's somebody out there that's hurting more than you are. And I'm not trying to minimize your pain. I'm just trying to help you to realize we need to step outside ourselves. The more time we spend internally focused and dwelling on our own issues and our own problems and our own pain, the less engaging we can be. We have to step out. We have to engage. We have to claim our identity in Christ that we are children of God, that we are saints, that we are God's beloved, and that we are conquerors. You may not be able to feel that you can really do that, but it is on focusing others that helps us with our own healing. We can begin to put things in perspective. by engaging with others, by engaging, by getting out there and doing something helps to put our pain in perspective. We live in a fallen world filled with pain, filled with suffering. You need only turn on the news to hear that, local or national or world news. And this human life has lots of textures and layers. And it's easy to get caught up in all these complexities of, but what ifs and, the, the, and they did that and, and all of this over here and all of this over here, all this stuff that's happening and everything. And it's just more and more than I can handle. And it's overwhelming. But we need to anchor ourselves in the basics. And this is basic. And I need you to hear this. God is good. Go ahead, say it. All the time. And all the time, God is good. Even when circumstances seem to be giving us a raw deal. That's what Jesus was telling James in that clip. God is good. You might be in pain right now. You might think that God can't use you because of your inadequacy as you see it, as your infirmity, as your depression, as your mental illness of whatever that is, of your broken heart, your grief. Fill in the blank. But God is good and God can use you but you have to be willing to engage. You have to be willing to step outside the pain and acknowledge who you are in Christ and allow God to use you because God is preparing you. And oftentimes it is in the pain that God is preparing us. And he has a purpose and he will use that pain for his good. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we give thanks to you. Thanks that you are our Heavenly Father who loves us and you are good. You are oh so good. And today, Lord, we lift up to you those people who have suffered in pain. We still continue to pray for Alice Morella. Lord, in Alice's case, the best that we can say is your will be done. Her heart longs for you, Lord. And we know that healing comes in many forms. She longs to see you, Lord. And we praise you, Lord, that Jeff Bach is again with us today and his sight continues to improve. And we are grateful for that. And today, Lord, we have the opportunity to come to your table in communion. And it is always good for our hearts to confess, Lord, before we partake of your bread and your juice. To confess that we are not as faithful as we 
want to be, that some days are better than others. We may not pay attention to the God moments or God opportunities that you lay before us. We confess that we don't always speak right or do the right things. We don't always do the things that should bring you glory. But God, you are good and you forgive us. And we are assured of that because Jesus Christ went to the cross for us so that we could be forgiven and that all who believe in him would have eternal life and nothing can snatch us from his hand. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for that assurance. Thank you, God, for that assurance. God, we just pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.